this tutorial we're going to look at the Luma corrector which is a way of dealing with the contrast and the brightness of a shot but still maintaining a great dynamic range of brights and darks. If you use the effect contrast and brightness you actually end up crushing your shot whereas if you use the Luma corrector and use it in conjunction with a scope particularly the YC waveform when we're looking at the luminance then you can make sure you've got a really wide dynamic range of brightness and you've got a shot that looks really great. Now you might look at this shot and your initial thoughts is gosh that was badly taken but in actual fact it wasn't. This is how it should have come out. When somebody takes a shot for you and you can tell them what to do you really want to say leave it as flat as possible because if it's flat you've got room to play with the shot to give it the look you want to give it. So if it comes in flat like this don't think that's a terrible shot. It's not. It's a shot that you can work with. It's only when people have knocked the gain of the camera right up or they've done something else in the settings that doesn't give you a lot of headroom to play with and ruins the shot. But if something comes in flat like this, you can work with it. Now, we're going to look at the YC waveform. So we go to the panel menu of our reference monitor. We're still in the color correction workspace. YC waveform and I've got chroma turned off. And what I can see is that all the brightness information in this shot is controlled in a very small area and ideally what we want to do is get it right up to 100 and right down to 0. So what we need to do is expand this range. So we're going to use the Luma corrector which again we go to our effects tab and we type in the word Luma and we've got two things that come up in color correction. We've got Luma corrector and Luma curve and we'll look at both of these but at the moment we're going to use the Luma corrector so I just make sure my footage is selected and double click to apply or alternatively of course you can drag and drop it on there as well both ways will work and go to my effects controls and there is my luma corrector now luma corrector in some ways is quite like the three-way color corrector in that you actually have opportunities to deal with shadows midtones and highlights we're only going to deal with this as a one item but you can go in and deal with the individual bits of highlights midtones and shadows which particularly when you've got say something overblown as this probably is over here and possibly some bits overblown here going in and being able to deal with just the highlights might help okay so the first thing we have is output composite means we're looking at the video as a whole and then we've got luma which is showing just sort of a black and white image showing us the luma ranges and we've got the tonal ranges so we talked about shadows midtones and highlights and pretty much looking at that as it stands at the moment everything is either shadow or mid-tone. I don't think there's a highlight in there that I can see. Okay, so I'm just going to put it back in composite for now. If you want to do a split view so that you can see one side changed and one side unchanged, you can always click the show split view. So let's just do that for a little bit of an example. I'm going to show split view, but this time I'm going to make it vertical. So it's pretty much in the middle at 50%. One side will be affected and one side will not be affected. Now we have the opportunity, as I mentioned, like a three-way color corrector, to decide what tonal range we wish to affect. At the moment, I'm dealing with the master, which is all of the pixels equally changed together. However, you can go in and change just the highlights, just the mid-tones, or just the shadows if you want to. We're not going to do that at the moment, but bear in mind you can do that if you wish to. Now we can play with, and I'm just going to open each one of these sliders because I find the sliders slightly easier to work with on this one. We've got a whole bunch of options for change, plus note at the bottom, we've even got secondary color correction. Now I've dealt with secondary color correction before when we looked at the three-way color corrector, and it's exactly the same idea here. You can select an item that you want to just affect that, but we're not going to deal with that. We're going to affect the whole image with this. Now, if you look at the waveform monitor over here, in fact, I'm just going to bring the waveform monitor over a bit, I think. I'm going to relay out my workspace. Okay, so now we have the waveform monitor here and the program monitor here just to get things a little bit easier to see. If I start playing with brightness and just pull it up, now bear in mind only one side is being affected so you're just seeing one side of the waveform on to move up all I'm doing is I'm pulling up all of the pixels as a single lump or all of the pixels down as a single lump so it's not actually increasing the range it's only moving the range so I'm going to take that back to zero whereas if I start to move contrast and I start pulling contrast out 
you'll see that I am actually expanding the range. But I very quickly get to the point where I'm hitting zero down here, but I'm not at 100% here. And that's where I can play with the contrast level. And I can pull the contrast level so it's roughly in the middle. And then I can increase the contrast range and get to the point where I'm almost at 100% and I just play with that contrast level. Pedestal does a very similar thing. In fact, Pedestal will move an item up and down. So Pedestal is another way of just moving the whole thing as one. And then go back and I can just pull the contrast out. So it's pretty much at 100 and at 0. Now I've got a really rich range, of, although it still doesn't look absolutely brilliant. So what I then want to play with is the gamma. The gamma is the midpoint. And what I'm saying is, do I want this to be brighter or do I want it to be darker? And I think this really needs darkening up. So I'm going to pull it to darken it up, and you'll see that I've still got my highlights up here at 100, but I've pulled a lot of the mid-range pixels, the midpoint, down to make it a lot more dark and moody. And you can see that this is before and this is after, and that's a nice, rich shot. Gain will allow me to decide if I want to boost highlights or pull down the, the shadows. So if I pull gain up, I'm effectively increasing the gain of this shot, increasing these highlights, and blowing out some of them in actual fact, and pulling it up and just, just make it a little bit stronger. I don't really want to play with gain, to be honest with you. So I'm going to take gain back to 1 in the middle there. And so this is the sort of shot I've ended up with. Um, I might just play with my gamma. Do I want it to be quite that moody? We'll have a look. Now I'm just going to turn off the split view. So that's the final shot. And if I just turn off the Luma corrector, that's before and that's after. So before it's really quite a flat shot and we've got a very restricted range. And when I do after, you can see that I've got a wide dynamic range from 100 to 0, possibly slightly overdone in this particular case, but still it's looking really powerful. The only thing that I would then do to this shot is I think I would probably add some kind of colorizing to it to give it a bit more emotional impact. I've done the correction, if you like, but now I would go in and make a color change just to give it that little bit more impact.